8.2 is compound interest, future value. So we're only going to be looking at things in the future. How much will you have? It's really important that you understand to read the questions with an eye to the grammar. So if you know what future means, how, how much will you have? What will you do? That sort of thing. Um, anything that implies future because the next lesson is going to be on present value. So you need to be able to distinguish between these two uh, types of questions. So the first one we're going to work on is um, a question where you inherit $10,000 from a rich relative that was deposited into an account that paid 6% per annum compounded annually. How much money will you have, see, will you have future tense on your 18th birthday? So here's year zero, here's your little baby, my best drawing and you put $10,000 in. Now, if you're getting 6% interest, so you're getting 10,000 times 0 0.06, which is $600. So after one year, that's like simple interest, right? You got $600. So if this was a simple interest question, you just say, well, you got $600 every year for 18 years, so you would just multiply these and add them to your 10,000 and that would be how much money you have. But compounding interest is much better for you if you're putting money into a bank. Because see what happens? You start with 10,000, you made 600, your balance at the end of that year was $10,600. So that's the amount that comes back to the balance at the start of the next year and you get interest on all of this amount so you actually earn 10,600, so this is 10,600 times 0 0.06 to give you this amount, which you add to this gives you this amount. So we just keep bringing this amount forward, calculating a new interest amount, so you can see that the interest amount is going to increase, and actually it's going to increase exponentially over time because you've done work with this back in exponential functions, right? So you can see that it's going to grow exponentially. And this is the equation that you're going to use. I think you even used that a little bit in the section on exponential growth, didn't you? Okay, so let's take a look at this equation. So we have A equals P times one plus I to the N. So our amount is going to be equal to the principal. So what's our P here? Let's write over here what we have, the principal was $10,000. That's what you got to put in your account. The interest rate, remember you have to change it to a decimal. So this is 6% compounded annually, so 0 0.06. Don't forget that's just 6 out of 100 to give you the decimal. And the amount of time that goes by, n, that's your time pass, or the number, n here is really standing for the number of payments. So you're getting one payment every year for 18 years. So this can change and I'm going to show you how it changes as we go down the, in the calculations here. So n is 18. So all I have to do is plug that in here now. So I have 10,000 times 1 plus i. So that's 0 0.06. So my 0 0.06 add it to 1 to the power of 18. And if you do that calculation, uh, you're going to get a lovely number, $28,543.39. So this is compounding, right? We're getting interest on the interest payments. If we had done simple interest, you're going to see how much less you would have received you would have received $600, $600 times 18. And that's going to give you 10,800, 10,800. And you're going to add that $10,000, which was your principal amount, add them together and you had 20,800. So you can see that with your compounding interest rate, 
you would make uh, almost $8,000 more. So that's, that's the joys of compounding interest. It's really, really important that when you're investing money that you're getting a compound interest rate. And we're going to show how that changes depending on the term. So compounding periods. So that means how many times do you get paid in a year? Okay, so annually, that's what we've done. You get paid once a year, right? Once per year. So there's all these different types of compounding periods. So we have once a year is annually, semi-annually, that's twice a year, twice a year. So you need to know these really well. Quarterly, well, that makes sense, right? Four times, four times a year. Bi-monthly means every two months, every two months. So every two months, that would be like, um, uh, every two months would be six times a year, right? six times per year because there's 12 months so every two would be six times monthly well every month that's 12 times per year and number of weeks in a year 52 52 times per year so those are your compounding periods that you need to know i i think they're pretty obvious right so let's using the previous example of the um, ten thousand dollars what would happen if you change the interest payments to monthly for 18 years? So we will need to change two things, the number of payments and the interest paid each month. So let's look at first the number of payments. So if I'm going monthly for 18 years, that means N is going to be monthly, it's 12 times a year, times 18. And 12 times 18 happens to be 216. So you're going to get interest paid into your account 216 times. Now, I'm not going to give you, uh, what was the rate, uh, 6%, right? I'm not going to give you 6% each month. If I gave you 6% each month, that would be like me giving you 72% a year. That's insane. So you're only going to get a fraction of the 6%. And what fraction are you going to get? Well, you're going to get one twelfth of it. So interest was 6% per annum. And if I adjust that, I have to annualize it as a decimal first. I don't think I'm running out of lead. So 0 0.06 is my decimal. And that's per annum. So that would be 0 0.06 divided by 12 per month. So that's the key to these types of questions. You have to adjust the N and the interest amount. So I'm not going to give you 6% every month. I'm going to give you 1 12th of that rate. And that comes out to 0 0.005. Okay, so now let's see how much more money we're going to get if we have um, monthly payment. So A equals P times 1 plus I to the N. And you should memorize that equation. Very important little one. Uh, your teacher might give it to you. So you have 10,000. 1.005. So I'm adding that to it. 0, 0.05 to the power of 18. And if you do that, you're going to get 29,367 dollars and 66 cents. So the other one was what 28 something, right? 28. Let's just flip back here for a second so I can see the amount. It was 28,543. 28,543. So you see that. If you get paid interest more often, your money grows faster. So maybe when you were a kid, you had a daily interest savings account. So that would mean you got interest on your interest every day of the year. That's as good as it can get. But monthly, still, um, you know, almost um, $800 more because you went to a monthly rate. Okay, so you could do daily interest savings if you want a daily 
daily would be now my n is going to change right again so my n is going to be 365 times 18 um let's see what that is 365 i'm just making this up times 18 so 6570 times you're going to get interest that's every day for 18 years but the interest rate you're going to get is going to be 0 0.06 divided by 365. Okay, so your teacher could ask you for all sorts of different scenarios, depending, might be quarterly, might ask you to compare the difference between a quarterly rate or an annual rate or monthly, weekly, daily, right? So that's make sure that you're, this is the whole key to these compounding questions is adjusting the N value or the number of payments and the interest paid each month. So you have to do the adjustment to um, annually. Okay, so let's go to another word problem. It says Nicholas opened an investment savings account. Let's get it in view. The interest rate was five and three quarters percent per annum. So that means every year compounded annually. Oh, great. We don't have to adjust it, right? You only have to adjust it if the compounding period does not match the interest period. He wants the account to be worth $5,000 in eight years. Future value, right? Future value. What principal should he deposit now? So let's take a look at the equation. Always write out your equations. 1 plus i to the n. And let's see what we already know. He wants the account to be worth 5000 So that's my A. We're trying to find P, right? What principal? It asks you right here. What principal should he deposit now? Like what? how much does he have to put in? My N compounded annually for 8 years. So my N is equal to 8. I didn't have to adjust it. So this question, if this said compounded semi-annually, then my n would be 16. Um, I also would have to adjust my i, but because this is annually interest, I'm going to write it as 5.75% as a decimal, 0 0.0575. Make sure you adjust this, okay? The, this, the stars here are make sure this are the same, this one is the same, and that you've adjusted if there's a different um, period of payment. Okay, so I'm going to put the 5,000 here. That's how much money he wants to have. I'm solving for P, and I have 1.0575 raised to the power of 8. My N is 8. Okay, so now you're going to need to get out a calculator and to solve for P. So you can just divide 5,000 by 1.0575 to the power of 8. And if you do that on both sides, of course, you're being a very good math student, keeping things balanced. So P comes out to approximately uh, 3... 19688. So he needs to invest $3,196 and 88 cents to have 5,000 in eight years if the interest rate is five and three quarters percent per annum compounded annually. So like I said before, most banks do some sort of compounding. You're not going to um, you're not going to go to the bank and get a simple interest loan. Those are unheard of because the bank's trying to make money off of you. Okay, the last question, and this would give you enough examples of the different types of questions, and if there's a specific one that you would like me to do, um, just let me know, and uh, I'd be more than happy to cover one of your homework questions for you if you're getting stuck on it. What interest rate compounded annually is required for a $200 investment to amount to, that's future value, right? $250 in four years. Write out your equation. A equals P times 1 plus I to the power of N. And we're trying to solve for I. So this one's a little trickier because it's in a bracket here to a power. So let's take a look at how we're going to do that. 
we want $200 investment. So that's my principal amount. That's what I put into the bank. The amount that I want to have is 250. And my N, it's compounded annually, so I don't have to worry about adjusting my N here. It's annually for four years, so N is four. So plugging this information in here, now I have 250 equals 200 times one plus I, which I'm trying to solve for, to the power of four. When you're trying to solve any equation that has an exponent, you have to isolate this part here, right? You want this by itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is divide by 200 on both sides of the equation. So now I have 250 divided by 200. That's going to give me, let's get my pencil back here. So this gives me 1.25 equals 1 plus i to the power of 4. Now, if this was, um, if I said 4 is equal to x squared, you'd know exactly what to do. You would take the square root of both sides, right? Take the square root of this gives you x, square root of 4 gives you plus or minus 2. So I'm going to take the fourth root of each of these. So I want the fourth root like this, you should remember this from your exponent lessons, right? The fourth root of 1.25 is equal to, and I'm going to take the fourth root of 1 plus i to the fourth. Now, I'm just going to show you this because it's probably a good idea for you to, to see it again because you did it quite a while ago. But first we're going to take the fourth root of 1.25. So 1.25, how do I take a fourth root? I raise it to the power of bracket, don't forget the bracket, one divided by four. If you don't put the brackets in, it's going to do 1.25 to the power of one and then divide your answer by four, which is not what you want here. Make sure it's in brackets. And I get 1.057, that's a really long one. Let's do it to three decimals, 1.057. Okay, so that's the fourth root here. Now the fourth root of this, if you recall, I'm just going to write it over here because it's, um, you would have this, one plus i to the fourth. And the fourth root of that means to the one quarter, right? Remember that? The fourth root is a one quarter power. And a quarter times four is going to give you one. So this gives you one plus i to the power of one. So this is just one plus i. It's important that you understand what you're doing here though because uh, well you're going to need to know how to do this on your final exam and exponents was a big part of chapter four I believe. Okay so what's i equal to? Well I have to subtract one so 0 0.057 is equal to i and remember this is the interest rate as a decimal so if I want it to be as a percentage so therefore i equals, I'm going to multiply it by 100. So we're doing the opposite here. 5.7% per annum. Okay, so that's, um, that's compounding interest. Um, maybe I'll just show you this one question that I had. It's one of your homework questions. I have a solution here for it just so that we don't waste time writing it all out. So this is from your, um, your textbook on page 492. And it says, on the day Sarah was born, her grandparents deposited $500 into a savings account that earned 4.8% per annum compounded monthly. They deposited the same amount on her 5th, 10th, and 15th birthdays. Determine the balance on Sarah's 18th birthday. Okay, so the reason I want to show you this one is because it's just a little bit complicated. It's not when you when you figure out what's happening here. Okay, so it said they deposited $500. That's a principal amount. 4.8% per annum. So that's 0 0.048 as a decimal divided by 12. Because remember, we have to adjust this for the, um, the compounding period. So it's compounded monthly. So that gives me this. 
And this 60 comes from 5 years times 12. So the N is 60 payments. You do your little calculation and you get this amount. Then it says on her 10th birthday, um, no, sorry, on the 5th birthday, you get this amount, 635.32. And then she gets another gift of $500. So on her 5th birthday, she now has 1135.32. Okay, so we're going to keep adding. We have to do separate calculations and keep adding in the $500 after every Ten, every five years. So on her 10th birthday now, we take this amount. Uh, no, sorry, this was at the end of her fifth birthday. So the 10th birthday, we're going to take this amount and do the same calculation all over again to see how much she has at the end of her 10th birthday. So here's her $500 again, right? She keeps getting $500. So now she has $1,942.58. So we take that amount, raise it again to the power of 60, which is 5 years times 12, and we get this amount and add another $500. So this is the amount she has on the end of her 15th birthday. So now to get to her 18th birthday, she doesn't get any more money on her 18th birthday. So I just need to figure out what is the interest that she earns. So this is another amount calculation from 15 to 18 is three years. So we have N is 36, same interest rate. And there's your final solution. You probably get this as one of your homework questions. So just thought I would um, run through that in case you got stuck on it. Okay, let me know how things are going. Good luck. Bye for now.